Welcome back to Lane Switching. Today, we're here with my guest. We got none other than Mel Clipson in the building. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Appreciate you, my G. Thank but you for being here, bro. Not just me. The homie Chris is in the cut, too, you know? Word. He's there. My work. It's the homie Yo. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Give a shout out. Give a shout out. What's your name, man? Uh, Chris CHRS Music on all platforms. Okay, okay. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let's get into it. Let's just start it off. Talk a little bit about... Uh, Life before music, your upbringing, you know. Well, you know, grew up in a family of five, four sisters, one boy. <laughs> so from there, it's just like, there's already a lot of ex expectations, you know? But besides that, grew up in, for the most part, actually, people don't know that, but in the beginning, I actually, from the South, moved to the east for like a little bit and then went back to the south again you know so just grew up from grew up in the south and just got caught up with the nonsense that comes with being in the streets and not and whatnot so you know that goes for that yeah yeah for that's sure. from my upbringing for sure and and you spent the the you know majority of your life all your whole life in Ottawa. yeah born and raised cool cool so when exactly did you start making music and why did you start making music? I actually like had like this top five all time that are alive, you know? And then there's actually two artists in that top five that made me want to rap. And then it was Stack Bundles and Lloyd Banks. Okay. You know? yeah, yeah. But um, as for me, like, so I can say like, they kind of like made, made me want to rap, but then I was looking at the rap scene and I won't even lie since I even trying to throw shade or anything, but I just felt like, you know, the, the there was a lack of lyricism, there was a lack of of just good music in general, period, you know? And I felt like and I know within myself that it's unmatched, you know? So I just gave it a go, started writing actually when I got caught up. As a young offender, got caught up in the system, went to William Hay, and I'm just like, yo, let me try this shit. We just started writing from there. And then the bars were like, not the best. I'll tell you, I used to say shit like chandelier and up in, like just some bogus and just simple lines, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, and then it's like, I started just tapping into like, yo, how do I get my vocabulary even better? I started reading books, dictionaries at times. I would just read just the whole dictionary itself, you know? Started getting better. But for me, though, the main thing that I notice is flow. Flow is what gets the people to move. Yeah. So once the flow is there, everything else is just say something with content. Yeah. And that's definitely. it, you know? So how did you actually end up getting the name Mel Clipson? <laughs> It's actually from the actor Mel Gibson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just, you know, one day I was just like clipped. You know, I just like, see, the thing with me is, yo, it's crazy like that because I'll see like a word and then I'll just like, maybe I'll grab sh move them around, like, and then they might come into something else. Yeah. So I just took out the Gibson and put the clips in and it just sounded nice. You know? So it was that. That's dope. That's dope. So I think it's now, was it 2016 or 2017 when you dropped Stick Up with the Visuals? 2016, yeah. 2016. So now we're talking on going on seven years. So <laughs> talk a bit about, about that track. And, um, you know, after that came out, you know, what, why do you or how do you? Yeah. Why do you feel the, the music got stagnant for you after that? Well, this, yeah, I dropped in 2016, November. Mm -hmm. And um <clears throat> stick up like that's talk about my upbringing you know like me and the homies like it's, it's not something that, like i'm proud to talk about like I, I have nieces and nephews now and then if they were to ask me i was like i was lost i was doing some crazy shit back then but stick up that was our way of life that was how we used to do it like that's how we fed ourselves that's how we hustled we grinded so i mean it's just you know, it's that. So a reflection, just, yeah, of, your a reflection of my reality, exactly. And then just like, 
the ski mask also. You know what I'm saying? It's like I I used to wear a balaclava like this to on the regular. Like just what it used to be rolled up or sometimes I wear like this, but I was doing that way back then, you know? So it's it's crazy. You know, people call it the poo feisty man. It's like that's I be me me missing out on my on my uh how can I say this? On on the presence that I should have capitalized with the music yeah. and the song and how I used to, you know, just bring my own style into it. So I didn't. I missed out on that. And then it became the Mel Clipson mask became the Push Ice T mask. But we <laughs> Push Ice T, you yeah, know? Most definitely. But it's like that. It's just I dropped Stick Up. And then what basically happened, I ended up catching a case and went to jail. I had to spend like a good, like, four or five years, six years in jail. And then now I'm back, back with a vengeance. And I'm back to claim what the fuck is mine. And that's that. Anybody in the wage. I, you know, I, like, I'm not looking for problems. I'm not ducking it. Just talking musically, you know? Yeah, we, yeah. We're here and we back. And, yeah. Most definitely. And I guess when you get, when you got out, like, how does, how does your mindset change? Like, you know what I mean? You have to adapt shit a lot happens in five six years you know yeah the every like everybody's that like when i was doing music not a lot of people were doing music in the ends like that like in my ends like maybe they had just like maybe we're tapping into it a bit but they weren't really like doing the music like that and then me leaving i guess it was like okay yo what the fuck this nigga was doing it too I could do it too. And then that's why you have like guys like um God bless his soul, Lito, you know, from my neighborhood. Like my mom used to watch him after school. Mm. You know, like so guys like him that just took the South Side flag and ran with it. Yeah. Like, well, ran definitely. with it, like, you know? And then it's just swack is untimely demise and all that, but Yeah. You know, rest in power, Toledo. Was there any other names, you know, wh- whatever, not just the South coming out of Ottawa that you knew of back when you dropped Stick Up? That I feel like, you know, are nice? Mm-hmm. To some degree, yeah. So, the God, God rest his soul too. Shylock. Mm-hmm. I know Shylock personally. Shylock was my celly in jail and when I used to do go to jail back and forth. I ended up catching the case in 2013, no, 2012. My house got raided, whatever. I ended up going to jail. Ended up being cellies with Shylock. That's crazy. And then, you know, we used to have these, like, um, we used to have Fair Friday freestyles. And then they used to be like, yo, West Side Radio. And because he's from the West, he was the West Side Radio. So I, I was South Side Radio. So we, he was competition for me, you know? Like, I felt like this guy's nice. If I, if you know, yeah. So guys like Shylock, um, we already mentioned Lido. Rebels was already on the scene by that time. He's doing his thing. Uh, for the most part, fuck. I'm trying to think around that time, 2016. Who else that I knew? Like, nah. I don't like. I don't. Well, and I think that that's kind of the case for a lot of people out in Ottawa is that they're really as much as there maybe was hip hop coming out yourself, you know, Shylock back in, you know, the mid 2010s. It mm-hmm. wasn't really until 2018, 2019, when I think the city started getting some serious motion. Shout out to Lido and, and FTG. Those to me, those are the guys that made people. Re- oh, shit. There's, Ottawa has a sound. Yeah. You know? It's around that time. But there's guys that have been doing it way before. And then there's yeah, guys that, that you know, like you asked, around that time period. Yeah. Who did I feel like was out there? Not 2016, nothing. Because I ended up going to jail. 2016, I caught the case. 2017, I was, when I caught the case, I ended up going on, um, I ended up getting bail. I was on house arrest for nine months. Even in 2017, 
there wasn't really like much 2018 i was in jail already mm -hmm. and then that's when i'm hearing everything i'm i get on the phone with my people they're telling me yo so and so this this and that is doing music yo and then i'm like oh shit and then i'm like fuck i missed out <laughs> yeah 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 but hey you're here now and what do you feel is the potential of ottawa hip-hop in 2023 in comparison to when you started in comparison what is the difference yeah There's a a lot of like, there's a lack of originality. Mm. That's the difference. Like everybody almost sounds the same. You know, everybody sounds the same. And do you feel it's everyone in general in Ottawa, or do you feel it's the ends? The different ends have different sounds. You you know what I call it? I call it like the, I I call this wave like. It's crazy because those two artists are beefing too, but I call it the A Boog and Lil TJ era. Like that's what that's what the sound is, you know. And I think everybody who wants to do music or starting to view music feels like that's what they need to do mm. in order to get like those guys maybe i don't know if they that's who they you know some of them i actually know that that's their favorite artist like yeah you sound you sound like what you listen to you know yeah it's most part it's not it's it definitely yeah lacking originality but also fortunately i think this next generation of artists coming out of ottawa they're they're super talented they're super driven yeah you got especially yes. like you know talking about the south you know some serious names coming out the south right now who are you know just in high school and their potential and you know you see the the different artists like Didi Osama and D Thang and Pusha T and like you know ESTG and these like I guess 2021 20, type 2022 yeah, yeah. type artists yeah. that are seriously influencing these kids and I think you know the future of Ottawa has like a lot of potential because of just no the different it does for sure it does you know like I don't want that I don't want what I said earlier to take away from that no no it totally because yo the, it, yeah. it's there like there's mad talent like you know even like if the styles are different like obviously not everybody is gonna you know rap the same way or like like when i say the same way it's not everybody is all about the bars and the, and like the punch lines and with the content like some people there's just like a fun it, 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 yeah a yeah, vibe like the a vibe. vibes you know that's like their go-to so it's like that's cool too and it's super blessed yeah. super super blessed because we need that you don't always need like you, like we can't always have you know the music that makes you want to reflect and think and shit like that like yeah, people so. need shit for the clubs you know what i mean yeah people sh need shit to play when they're turning up yeah most and definitely and fun. i think what ottawa needs is just more anthems what really put us on the yeah. map initially was yeah. anthems and you know stuff that really got you know the the culture and got the vibe of ottawa and you know express it in a way that it was you know consumable for the average listener mm -hmm. whereas like now it's like if it's just too general if it's just too regular then you know it's not going to stick but i think a lot of artists have potential out here to you know have their work stick and and speaking about your work in november you dropped uh crippy and they forgot mm -hmm. just just talk a little bit about those tracks and how yeah. they came together well those tracks were you know Shout out to New Regime, the label. They were dropped on uh, the New Regime label. And basically, it's, uh, yeah, this is just, there's a, actually, there's a, view to, there's a video I'm dropping with the Crippy. But and, um, as for, you know, the, the, the music is for its, the, those singles for itself is, you know, they, I had them in a the vault for a little bit. And then I just felt like, yo, let's drop some, get traction yeah, so I can get going pick up some speed and then just so go from there you know yeah for sure and i think you know it's, it's always good to be picky about your work it's always good to you know keep yourself to certain standards but sometimes artists they have too high of a standards in themselves and so they just won't feel inclined to drop that music and you know it's kind of hard to pick up traction it's kind of hard to develop a fan base when you don't really have much of a catalog yeah when you don't really yeah. have much work so you yeah. kind of doesn't matter how good or how bad you feel it is sometimes it's best just to put the work out there and just get the feel for what yo I, I like i like you said that because yo i actually want to how do you feel about 
let's just say you have music. Mm-hmm. You have like a, a, a EP, let's just say. Yep. And like you said, you have, a, you have to build a catalog. Obviously, with now and shit, the way shit is going on, you have to do a rollout and this, this, and that for an EP and you know, TikTok, all of that, the videos and all of that. Yeah. But let's just say, like, a guy like me, you've been missing from the scene for a little bit. Now you have this EP. Now, let's just say it could be a little bit rushed or not, right? But from what you just said, I feel like if, you know, it was you, you would have dropped it. I mean, yeah, I think the most important thing is, is that it's just to get music out there. And That's it. At, at the end of the day, like, I feel like some people limit to themselves to what the A-listers do. And you got to understand you're not at that level yet. Most 90% or more of the guys are not at that A-list level. The algorithm game sometimes is what that gets into people's heads. Yeah. I feel like. Yeah. And and it's also perception. It's people don't want to have that perception of like always dropping music or always. They don't want to make themselves too available. They want to seem, you know, I mean, a little bit more like. They want to have that mysterious vibe to it. Exactly. For sure. And sometimes it's hard to do that when it's already a difficult city to make it out of is Ottawa. And it's kind of hard to be mysterious and not really just putting your all out there because how are people supposed to, you know, gravitate towards that and hold on to that and stuff. And, you know, when it comes to the rollout, I think, you know, what Gucci Mane's done with his 1017 artists, I think is the best thing ever. In 2021, late 2021, they dropped the So Icy Boys mixtape Mm -hmm. and that featured guys like Big Walk Dog, Big Fizzle, all those crazy names, Hot Boy Wes. And what they did is all those singles that were on that, then they would release albums, but it would almost be a part two. So they would collab all of their previous songs from the Soacy Boys, put that on like side two of the tape, even though it's all streaming. So there's no yeah. really side two. Mm-hmm. And then side one would be all their own singles with all their own rappers they want to work yeah. with. Okay. So it's previously bouncing off of that Gucci Mane clout and not just the Gucci Mane clout, but it's getting the name out there and it's, you know, building that building up to that ep building up to that album you yeah. know what i mean instead of just boom dropped a photo on instagram i hope you like it just building up to that and yeah. so over time i think people will fuck with it and people will fuck with your music yeah, you know absolutely. hopefully most definitely and for you what do you feel like is the most rewarding part about making music fuck there's a lot there's the process like sometimes it's hard, but it's like there's songs that like I've written or like as I'm going, I'm like, yo, I'm this is crazy. Like when I'm finished with this, what the fuck? You know? Yeah. So it's like that feeling when you get that, you're like, yo, I'm about to just do some crazy shit right now. So it's always that, you know? But then obviously there's pro- the pros and the cons, you know? For sure. But for me, it's all of it. But actually, nah, there's the one part of finding the beat sometimes. That 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 is like the least but when you find it or when you get it, it's there, right? So yeah. from there it's just it's everything else is just water. Most definitely. And you know, it doesn't have to just be the city, but who'd you like to work with in the future? Uh well I'm gonna break down the question like this. I mean tattoos. If we're gonna say um in the city um in the city that's me right here yeah he's here <laughs> he's right. here chris what's that point there's leah clout yeah there's a uh, little d voice of the south there's uh red bull dodo banks yeah, yeah. um fuck. like a- anybody too like you know anybody anybody that wants to work like Shout out to the Runaway Boys, you know. Um, Deuce, I don't know if you know Deuce. Deuce the Don. Hmm. Shout out to him too. He's another artist, but he's he he like more on the R and B. But like, okay, okay, definitely like he raps too. But yeah, that's dope. That's dope. So for you. 
you know, it's just January. There's a lot of year ahead of us. What can we expect from you this year? A whole lot. I'm dropping Costa Cuban links on February 3rd. It's a little EP with a video. Crippy is already a song that's on it. The single for it. Um, and just a whole bunch of shit with New Regime. Like a whole bunch. I have a next single actually. But we've been working like there's shit in the vault. But like, you know, we have check coming out soon. Yes, sir. So like, we just played it for you, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's yeah, true. um, for as, as in projects, yeah, there's check. I mean, there's check. Comes to Cuban links, February third, and then the rest is just new regime projects and we're just dropping every month it's gonna be a single every month that's fire and yeah shout out to tylin too <laughs> most work, definitely. work work with her on the way too most definitely so where can people find you on social media all clips in um <laughs> they got me on tiktok too i have to <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i'm on tiktok too <laughs> yeah i'm yeah. there uh yeah I'm, I'm on ig mel clipson youtube page mel clipson um apple music mel clipson it's just mel clipson everywhere you know? yeah yeah yeah. so you got an ekp coming out from when we're recording this this coming friday so let the people know the name of that ep and just you Coast know where we're links find on all platforms everywhere I'm dropping february 3rd so when this is recorded that will already be out so go stream that EP. That was the Mel Clipson interview. I'm DF2. That's Mel Clipson. Chris in the cut. Chris in the cut. <laughs> Peace, Peace y'all.